Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. I'm going to be teaching you about sequences. We're going to go over how to create a simple sequence and then how to play that sequence inside of your game. This is not going to go in depth and cover all of the stuff you can do, but after this you'll have the basics down of knowing how to animate, edit, and then insert that sequence and get it going in your game. So sequences are really great for a lot of different things, but primarily the first thing that comes to mind is cutscenes. So let's go ahead and make a really simple cutscene that we can just insert into our game. And it's an asset like anything else, so in sequences I'm going to go to create, sequence. Now I preface my sequences with SEQ, and I'm just going to call this running. Now I've got a sprite here, from, that is a night sprite, and now I can bring that in, and here it is. So, there are three parts to this sequence. There is the canvas up here where you can see everything. There is the track sheet and the dope sheet. Now this is very similar to if you've ever used After Effects or any other big software program. We're gonna be able to add keyframes to every part of our asset that we've brought in. Now first, I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the size of our canvas, which we can do up here to 640 by 480. And you can see that this now changes the whole size of our canvas that we're working with here. So this is the size of the sequence we've got here. You can have it be as large as you want or as small as you want. The origin for the sequence is right here, so this is where it's going to start playing. So when we create this sequence, the origin is going to be very important. We can turn on a grid like we have, or we can turn it off. I like working with it off. Now, down here, we actually have our asset. This is our sprite, and if we toggle this little arrow, it shows us all of the different properties that we can add and manipulate. And then over here, we have the dope sheet, which controls how long something lives for. It shows us all of those keyframes, and it is, controls the length of the sequence itself. So by default, the length is 60. I'm gonna change this length to 300, so now we have a 300 frame length sequence, and you can see that our knight doesn't actually live for very long at all. So let's go ahead and right click, and we're gonna stretch this asset key to the end. So now he's gonna live for the entire time. You can also drag on either end of this to alter it. Now notice that the properties stay under here. They don't shift as this moves because those properties, if they have a different keyframe before or after them, it has to stretch all the way to that keyframe. If I delete that, then it will go back. Now let's go ahead and control Z back so that it's on the entire length of the frame. I'm gonna keep my cursor at zero here and then I'm going to move our knight to the very edge there outside of our canvas. So now we can decide where this knight is going to run to, how fast he's going to run, and we can control everything else to do with that. Now we're going to keep this real simple, but I still want to show you the power that sequences have. So if we move our line, let's say around 230, and then we just move our knight, this is going to automatically make a new keyframe right there, and you can see that it appeared, and now we can see the track and the trajectory of our knight. So if we press play, he runs from the left to the right. So let's go ahead and come in right around the middle, so right around 100 frames, and what I'm going to do is add a new keyframe by clicking this plus. Now, if you've got this top part selected and you press plus, it's actually going to add a bunch of other ones. The origin, rotation, scale, it's going to keep track of all of those things. And normally that's fine because you can affect all of them, but I don't want them now. So I'm going to press control Z and this time I'm just going to click on position and then press the plus icon or F9. So now it doesn't really do anything because he's running the exact same. But what I want to do is right here, I actually want to have him stop. So I'm actually going to come in here and delete this last keyframe. So he's going to run here, stop, and I want him to stop animating as well. So we can control that. So I'm going to add a parameter track by clicking this little plus icon next to the eyeball, add an image index, and image speed. So up until this point, the image speed has been 100. I want to set it to zero. Okay, now he's not animating at all. But the problem is he stopped animating completely from the beginning to where we want him. Now that's no good. 
So let's go ahead and come to the beginning and we can change this image speed to 100 and you can see that makes a new keyframe on our image speed. Now with image index, it's actually keeping us from being animated. So I'm gonna delete that real quick. We don't need it right now. So now we are animated and we're at a slower speed, but it kind of slows down. It goes all the way to zero. So he's not being animated at the speed I actually want for this whole thing. So instead I'm going to come over here to image speed, right click, change interpolation to off. Now the value of image speed stays at 100 all the way until we reach right here and then it gets set to zero instantly. So interpolation is moving from one point to the next nice and smooth. That's what we're doing when we're moving, which is what we want. Otherwise we would just immediately zip from one spot to the next and that's no good. Instead, we want interpolation off for the image speed because we want him to pause right here. And then at this point, I want him to turn around. So we're gonna add a new parameter track and this time it's going to be scale. So here we can use the scale to have him turn around. So this is the X axis. I want him to turn around on the Y. So I'm gonna click on the second hundred, add a negative to that. That is the wrong one. We're gonna do the first one then. So we're gonna add a negative 100 and that will have him turn around. Now, if we do that again, now he's running backwards. So we need to add a keyframe here at 100 and we're gonna turn off interpolation one more time. Now, if we do this, he stops, he turns around, we'll wait a few frames, and then we're gonna have him start running one more time. So we'll start right here. I'm gonna click add keyframe for all three because we want him to stay here the whole time. And then we're gonna go have him run to the end again. So then over here, I'll move him. It'll automatically make a new keyframe. And I want him to be turned around. So we're gonna reduce the scale to just 100. And we're gonna change the scale here as well to 100. So he turns around and then we need to increase the animation speed as well. So the image speed here is gonna get set to 100. Now, if we press play, there we go. Looks really good. That's a basic sequence. I'm not gonna cover much more than that. You can see that it can easily take a long time and you can get as in depth as you want. It's really, really fun if you enjoy doing this kind of thing. My name is Aaron Craig and I'm a teacher and game developer at Let's Learn This Together. And my passion is to get you into game development. It is not impossible and you don't need a math degree. And if you have the desire, then we can make it happen. This book is designed to take total newbies to game developers in just 30 days. And you don't need a lick of programming or game design experience. It's simple and broken down into easy to manage chunks that will keep you entertained and encouraged along the way. Just give me one hour a day for the next month to turn your dream into a reality. So head on over to letslearnthistogether.com to order your copy of So You Want to Be a Game Developer today. And I'll see you on the other side. Now to put it in our game, I'm gonna make a new object. I'm just gonna leave it called object. We're gonna to go to the create event. And inside here, we need to use several specific layer functions. Now there's a lot more we can do with layers. This is just scratching the surface. But for now, we've made one, we've made a sequence, and now we're going to play it. So we're gonna say var sequence equals layer sequence create. We need to pass in the layer ID, which is where we want it to go. We need to pass in the X position and the Y position of where it's gonna be. So I'm just gonna put it right in the middle. So room width divided by two, room height divided by two. Now when you use this function, it returns the ID of the sequence you created. What we need to get next is the sequence struct. So I'm gonna say var seq struct equals layer sequence get instance and we pass in the sequence we created the sequence struct holds a lot of information that you'll find very very useful as you dive more into this so here's the manual on this get instance one and if we click on sequence functions and we scroll down to the sequence instance struct there's a lot of information here you can control the head position direction scale if it's paused if it's finished 
all of that information you can get from this struct. We're not going to cover that right now. Again, a future video. So make sure you subscribe and like and stay tuned. And then all we have to do is say layer sequence play and pass in the sequent element ID that we got from creating it. Let's run our game, which won't do anything because our object is not in the room. A common mistake, even for me. Now the object itself doesn't matter where it's at because we're creating the sequence right in the middle of the room. There we go. Kind of small, I don't have any cameras or anything set up, but you can see the boundaries of the sequence there. It is playing, it works exactly as you would expect. So that's the basics of sequences. Really, really powerful, really cool, a lot of fun. You can lose yourself in them and spend hours like I have, but that's what you need to know to get started. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If you have any questions or want to see more covering of sequences, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for joining me, and as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as one dollar a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.